Magenta, maybe? Oh, knee to the face! Cool. Hit the gas. Wow. What's up, YouTube? Hey, what's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Salutations. However, whenever you're watching this, we appreciate you because you already know time is expensive. Yes. Thank you and much appreciated for tuning in. And we appreciate you and thank you for subscribing. But if you're here for the first time, if you know and you didn't know, but this shows about anything and everything created. Anything that sparks your creativity, whatever medium you dabble in. Expressing the soul and speaking your heart. Welcome to another episode of Creativity Unsheathed. I'm Oliver Sequel. And I'm Nino. And yes, we're brothers. Yes, we are. We are. And this is the show where we feel. This is the show where we simply say, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Even though there's repercussions on that, the universe always finds the way to make it work out. Yeah, payback. Or good karma. Mm -hmm. yeah, good karma, bad karma. You know, it just, it, the universe finds a way. The universe knows. Yeah. The universe knows. Yeah. Why we're saying all this and what we're looking in today is Gambit. Number 11. 11. Side by side with Double D. Dead Devil himself. And who are these tentacles? Who knows? Maybe by me, Omega Man. Could be Omega Red. Or, or Constrictor. Or Machine Man. And the creative team on this, you got Fabian Izzyeza and Steve Gorosi or Scorsese, maybe Gorosi. And uh, his his comic book career like started in '93 under um, Clive Barker's um, Ecto Kid. That's a weird book because it's off of a Marvel brand. It's a Marvel uh, imprint. Mm. And Clive Barker, just what stuff he's created. Or yeah. yeah, it's just. Marvel wanted to collaborate with that, but you know, that's crazy. And so they created a, a, a hero or a book called Ecto, Ecto Kid, and the Wachowskis wrote, mm -hmm. uh, wrote some of that. And like full circle, like I didn't know that, I picked up a random book by by Image, but it had Bray, Brian K. Bond's uh, name on it, but he did a book with him called uh, We Stand On Guard. Mm -hmm. I, I picked it up. It's mm -hmm. like a like six issue, five issue run, I think. I'm not too sure, but it's a mini story, and it's like, wow, wow. So we got two Steve Gorosi's uh, work Put it under the uh, definitely, the lens, definitely yeah. a future episode for sure. But yeah, it's just crazy of, a, of his career, what he went through, and what the biggest one was was he worked under Rob Liefeld's uh, Young Bloods. So like. He worked, he worked there for a little bit mm -hmm. with the young bloods and then he jumped on Gambit. Oh, that, yeah. that right after, huh? With Fabian as he has a. Ooh. Right, how funny, right? Kind of like a. Yeah. How big F you, right? right? How ironic. But yeah, he's on the pencils doing interiors and I think his. Uh, his career is really interesting because he is a storyboard artist in Hollywood. You know, no he, way. He did big projects from iRobot, V for Vendetta, Speed Racer, Ninja Assassin, Whoa. Cloud Atlas. Ninja Assassin. Dude, seriously, Jupiter's Ascending and like the most famous of them all, the Matrix Trilogy. What? Yeah, so he worked with the uh, Wachowskis, co-created Doc Frankenstein with Jeff Darrow and the Wachowskis through the uh, Clyde Barker's books of Ecto Kid and just having um, those ties and connections, creative connections, mm. you know, they're able to keep doing work. And it was Steve's storyboards that helped Wachowskis kick off uh, Matrix as a pitch. Oh. Yeah, dude. I wonder what sequence he, he, he showed or just whatever, you know? Yeah, dude, that's just nuts. What storyboard did he show him that made him want to do it? Right. And then he just totally, like, throughout this whole book, and I, I just wonder now if the whole 25 issue run of mm -hmm. this, if he has that same energy of image, because you just totally see every, but better. Can you see Asa? Yeah, no, or uh, uh, Steve's uh, Steve, Steve, Steve. Yeah, Steve yeah, yeah. Steve's art. It's like, it's look like image, but 10 times better. Yeah, so 
we'll jump into it now because okay. I think it's enough talking about him. We gotta show the work. It's too much. Wait, it's too big. So he does the cover as well. Oh, like, okay. Dude, I feel like it's a waste of paper for you. Yeah. Damn, he did all those movies, storyboard wise, almost. All of those movies, dude. Good enough to be in Hollywood, man. Come on now. So, so sequential rules, dude. It's gonna be awesome. Oh, look, look at that. Look at that details on just that boot. Right, the and wrinkle. The, it really shows the pressure. Dude. Like his foot on against his face. What a way to open up on the splash page, yo. So you got the creative team up front. And you gotta give it up to the anchor, Andy Owens. Hey, this is the only way I know him. But look like he stayed true of what was laid down by Steve. Scorch so those tentacles did belong to Constrictor. Mm. <laughs> so now, the whole story about this is that um, he gets blackmailed by the mafia. Mm -hmm. and he has to steal a body organ uh, because that a mafia leader needs it himself. But mm. he's like way down on the on the list of getting it. Yeah. And Daredevil's trying to recapture that organ because uh, he knows a, a friend of Matt Murdock's. Mm. So he knows someone of Matt Murdock that needs it. So Daredevil is out to go get it. And he's retrieve. higher on the list, huh? Yeah, so he needs to retrieve it. And then Gabbit needs to go after Constrictor because of his adamantium tentacles. He needs, he wants to help uh, save Silvertooth. Mm. A villain, no less. Yeah, like, right. I wonder why. Just the whole uh, human mutant com uh, camaraderie, you know, just... Mutant to mutant, right? Uh, Coming from Gambit, no less, it's like a love for a villain. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's kind of like Spider-Man. Like, even though you're a villain, I can't let you die. Yeah, man. Dude, look at this double page spread. Damn. You get this like two, two more, three more times. And man, just look at that. That's damn good. Look at the details. Look at the different uh, variations of debris and of the, of the brick wall. Crazy. It's like in the way it flows. It's totally cool. Yeah, that's damn good. Man. Oh, you can. That's cool. You see him falling out of the side of the building, the alley. Right. As it, you really see the cinematic uh, um, vision. You know, the, that point of view. You look at this. Pretty cool. Nice frame. This this purple color always reminds me of Watchmen. Yep. I don't know why. I see it. Magenta, <laughs> maybe? Oh, knee to the face! Cool. Damn. <laughs> Hit the gas. <laughs> oh, that's a good car. Nice deets. Man, there's really a lot of action. Like, like a lot of uh, energy in it. Seriously, dude. Oh man, going down the build, the side of the building. See. Oh yeah. That's cool. Oh, he totally pulled a like an image panel sideways. Right. Right. You totally see the, the image energy, but ten times better. Right, but it still looks like it's falling towards you. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And look at this explosion. Yeah. The United Defeated the Matrix comic. Oh, man. Like, you'll just put the storyboard. Yeah. For real. <laughs> That's cool. Totally. Might be like a Batman. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. Oh, that's cool. He's looking over. Yeah, that's good detail, man. While well, keeping the sequential art going. Yeah, like it's on to like making the people move in the back, you know what I mean? Yeah, not for the sake of just having a nice picture, right? He's just like, he knows how to balance it all out. Not losing the uh, visual narrative. Yeah. I don't want to see this. Mm. I want to rewatch this, give this a try again. Mm. You guys watch this. Come back below. And then a little flashback of what, why the story is taking place. So again, like I mentioned, he has uh, he knows a friend 
I need to don't uh, organ needs to retrieve it from Constrictor, and now he's on the chase. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? <laughs> so that's what he wants, and now he's gonna go get. Mm, it kind of almost reminds me of the uh, <clears throat> Batman and Robin movie uh, plot. Almost save Alfred, but then get it from another villain. Oh yeah, almost. Call me in the morning. <laughs> Take two of these. <laughs> so, oh man. The first Pokemon movie. I cried. Really? Yeah. Well, that's nice. a good one. It was a good one. It was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Beto. Mr. Cajun. He's in the mix because he needs the animantium from Constrictor. And look at that sequential. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, leads. Oh, Directional, cool. yeah. I played those seven two. <laughs> you played seven two? Well, what do you think? Poker. Right? It's kind of like, I feel sorry for Constrictor. Like he's going through the same thing again. What would Gambit? Man, double. Right? Like a knee to the face, whip into the face, going, falling down. Sheesh. And no one has adamantium, so I don't know if he can even feel all of this. <laughs> like the sequence too, dude. <laughs> Block it right away. Nice uh, effect. Nice reaction time there, Gambit. Training worked out for you in the danger room. Bang, bang. Sounds out. Bing bang. <laughs> nice silhouette. Taking two, taking on two on one. Man, it's tiring. Or one on two with that hat. Ooh, another one. Nice. Oh, see, look, now I see the uh, matrix. The helicopter. Scene. Oh. The glass window sharing. HD IMAX. Right? That whole slow mo sequence. Psh. And look at the, the variations on the glass, dude. When she crashes through the window. Psh. Get up, Trinity. Right? Get up. Nice. Dude. Right? That's the sequence, man. Good job, man. It's pretty cool. Clean. Underrated book. Underrated Marvel book, man. Yeah. You gotta get it just for this uh, Steve Scorosi art, man. Pretty happy it's one and done. Yeah, dude. It's like this is what Marvel needs more, or or the big two, good one and done. Yeah, so this, this art, man, so awesome. Wow. Look so look. It. So we're looking down into the alley. Man, See, because this is the rooftop. Right, looking down to the streets. Man, totally. I get the matrix view. It's like a check mark. Yeah. Like yeah. like the staff leads you decks. Oh yeah, and that's good. Oh yeah, totally. Right. You can like a staff. A directional tool. A little, a little arrow, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Good job. Nice. The nice. devil's in the deep tail. <laughs> Ooh, I want Ooh. this one. <laughs> Collect them all. Model kits. Oh, that's great. Dude, look at the sequence, dude. That's fucking great. Awesome. Man. What a use what a good awesome use of the silhouette. Yeah. It's like something you would see in like Ninja Turtles or like the hand. Man, it's just the way it directs the eye, like showing interest in the back while having this uh, silhouettes balance it. Like he did it backwards. Mm hmm. He did it backwards. Yeah, dude. And it would work Hollywood wise too if you were to like do a camera, like a B roll. Mm -hmm. Like you just, you know, from the other side, you know what I'm saying? Like a big build up montage. Yeah. Comment below if you guys were a Toys R Us kid. Oh man, that was. <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey with my friend. Jeffrey the Giraffe.
His yeah. name was G. Raff. <laughs> 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 Gerald Raffae. <laughs> Gerald Raffae. <laughs> Giraffe. It's Ger Raffae. Giraffe. It's French. Giraffe. Mr. Sinister. So you get a little prelude here. Maybe it's going to lead into the next issues. Who knows? So I, I take it Inspector Hood is like a shared villain between like Daredevil and his street level, like even Luke, Spider-Man. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure like Fabian as he was like looking through the available villains. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like if he has to go down the list of the B-list or C-list, you know, at least he makes a compelling story out of this. Yeah, it makes him cool. Right. Not just boring like villain, like he actually care for the villain. Right, instead of... Uh, you know, all the basic money, money heist. You know, he actually got blackmailed. So, like, is he really a villain? You know, yeah. Is he really bad? You right. Know? He was trying to do good as well. It's like, you. we'll, we'll see later why he's being blackmailed by uh, the mafia. Almost looks like Casada. Casada Daredevil. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Totally. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. Man, just look at the, it's the details, yo. It's awesome. Gambit's playing in the foreground. Now that makes sense. Like, it's it's not forcefully placed. Yeah, and you see his other foot. Right, and it's coming down. It's coming from here, so it just makes sense. Like, showing that direction. And then showing this. Oh, yeah. Chin music. Ooh. It's lightly sweetened. <laughs> Sweet <and> wow. <laughs> this probably is like the third best rendition of Gambit after Jim Lee Lee Weeks. Yeah. So like Lee Jim Lee first, yeah. Huh? Jim Lee Lee Weeks, and then I, I think now Steve Oscarosi. It's like, yeah, it's just really. The way he and the way he did, like draws the, the, the sequential art, mm -hmm. it's just it, it's a topper. You yeah. know? it's like they draw Gambit well sequentially. Mm -hmm. Jim Lee, like the money shot. Yeah, but right. damn, they're all great. Right, it makes makes the characters look cool. Oh, yeah, man, like, he always incorporates like a speed line, speed uh, speed lines, dude, and adding that manga. Look, mm -hmm. yeah, that's really cool. Mm, you know, I thought of like they don't do a lot of characters in other artists' style, like how they do with Batman set. No, yeah, right. Totes. Yeah. They need to come out with more toys like that. Yeah. I mean, look at this panel. Oh. Yeah, the, the you can actually feel that G force of being on that train. You know, yeah, total matrix. Seriously, like totally a Hollywood action. <laughs> oh, jump around in the nick of time. It's so Hollywood. Hmm. <laughs> oh, ouch. He whipped his Cajun nose. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you can't smell the spices. Wakum! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Splash! Now they're trying to figure out how they're gonna resolve this conflict and go after their MacGuffin. Mm, it's, the, it's the mafia leader, huh? Yep. Frankie! So he has a neighborhood friend. I don't know if it's like a girlfriend or mm -hmm. wife, but he still has heartstrings for her, and that's why he's on being blackmailed. So he has to deal with the organ in order for Frankie to be saved, and mm. if not, he's gonna offer. So, of course, well now, is Constrictor really a villain? You know, you gotta put that in question now. And he's trying to do the right thing. Yeah. But then other other people's perspectives might look at it as wrong. Yeah. You know, like Daredevil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, if he only knew. But now, he has to do, as him, as Daredevil, has to do the right thing. Like, just go by the list, you know? Yeah. And that's the only way. Sometimes the antagonist is the hero. It's crazy. Right, like double edged, like. Yeah, dude. And it's all like life is truly based on perspective. 
man. Seriously. It's nuts. Uh oh. And so it's not as as far as for Frankie, it's like what the life the lifestyle he's lived. It's like now this disease that he has, it's his karma. Now he just has to what the universe sees, he has to live with that. You know? Compared to the one who's on that top of the list, waited. And now he's trying to be, be be rewarded with that organ. I wonder if Constrictor can control these tentacles. Like it's part of him. Right. So let's see. It's like Omega Red, but then Omega Red is comes out from under the wrist. Oh yeah. And then his is over. Yeah. Like oh Venom and Spider Man. Ah, uh, totes, totes. Oh. That's oh, that's a cool comparison. I kind of like it on the wrist, under the wrist better. Cause when it comes out, you can actually grab it. Oh, uh, right. But when you do this, you, you do it over the wrist. You can do the whole all over under pull. Mm, Either more, way, more support, you know, more. Yeah. yeah. It's like you get another like more uh, tension, more grip. Yeah, like a rope climbing. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Right. Rope climbing. So now they're trying to do all the right things themselves, and let's see how it's going to turn out. Because it says, how many wrongs don't make a right? We can fix this for everybody. Right? See, trust is expensive. Man. And we're talking about life here. Right? Life and death. Seriously, y'all. <laughs> life and death for good and bad. How is this not universal for y'all? Right? It's like, how, how universal is this whole... Uh, right? Morton's pork almost. Yeah, dude. Wait, but now it's like, who gets to live is the question. Mm. Damn. But it's, you gotta go off of the list, right? Okay. As if it's like uh, God's list, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, who's gonna come into heaven this time? Mm. Right? But as far as Frankie, he's gonna have to wait on the devil's list, right? Just for his lifestyle. Yeah, right? yeah. So. It's like giving it to the mob. It's like keeping him alive to keep his title, right? Absolutely. For the bad. Yeah. Right. And yeah, that's why life is a balance, y'all. And look, 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 that's awesome use of the solids oh. here, man. It's awesome. That's cool. Like how you can get away with little red. Yeah. Or little color in any character yeah. when drawing silhouettes. Right. Especially the red off of uh, the side panels of uh, Gambit's pants. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Threw that in there. See, you really see Gambit, Gambit like this. Oh uh, yeah. Totally. Man, see, like, yeah, it makes me want to get more beat of this Gambit. Third series. 1999, y'all. So if you guys didn't know this existed, you gotta go, we're gonna, you have to go get it. Yeah, we have to go check, double check those. Yes, sir. But that is you. So. Who was there for Monday Night Nitro, y'all? I was there. I was flipping back, back and forth between WCW Nitro and Monday Night Raw, y'all. I was there as well. But I, I own the first time reason I gravitated to Nitro more because of Sting. Oh, man. Right? I would. Yeah. And it's like it was right around the same time we were watching Crow. <laughs> that's cool. I would sound too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I probably would watch for Sting more. I always liked the painted face. Mm -hmm. I thought the story art and storylines that they had were, were, were just as good as WWE's. But you can really see the tensions or the... The, the feud between yeah. both companies which led up to the whole WWE and versus Raw it's, it's like it's like an issue of a DC versus Marvel Gambit side by side now issue 11 if you guys didn't know this existed now you gotta go get it because we gotta go get it ourselves because I just love that Steve Scorosi art and just really see that image influence that he's that he stole from uh, uh, Rob Liefeld and image and just working with um, Young Bloods, you yeah. know, he just made his own flavor in Gambit, which led to his career in Hollywood. And man, who knew that doing comics can lead you to do Hollywood stuff? Yeah. So, hey man, storytelling go hand in hand, y'all. So don't do just pinups. Don't yeah. do the image way. That's lazy yeah. drawing. Learn sequential art. Yeah, because for sure. If you can't get a job in comics, at least you can get a job somewhere in movies. Because yeah. they need storyboarders. For well, sure. Right, storyboard mm -hmm. is sequential art too. I mean, it's storyboarding for movies is a whole different monster. There's a certain formula you gotta go by when mm -hmm. you do story storyboarding, 
but for the most part, it's almost like comics. Yeah, for know? sure. So you just really got to admire what Steve Grossi, you know, added here, and yeah, now I'm a forever fan. I just got to go find more. Yeah, 1999, yeah? 1999, third series, y'all, so go get it. Whatever band you find it in, whatever comic book store, bookstore you guys go to, if you guys get in line, hey, do what you do. Any any convention, cards or comic collectibles, if it's find, coming up, find a box. If it's coming up in your city, yeah. go. Please go. go. Go for us. Save you, these books. Go for us, even though we can't make it. You know, yeah. We'll be there in spirit with you guys. And then share, share what you got. Share what you, you know, pulled out. Right. Follow us on IG. Tag us. Tag us that you said, oh, I got this from Creativity on Shay. Yeah, mm -hmm. man, I'm gonna get whatever um, character I wanna get and be a completist. All right. All right, now we're gonna end this episode with a motivational quote for y'all. Oh, that ass. Wow. <laughs> and we'll let the value hit you for what it's worth. And if you heard it before, by all means, it's just a reflection of where we are today. Nice, nice. Deal with it. And this one is by Cheryl Adams. Mrs. Adam, or Ms. <laughs> and she states, Energy is equal to desire and purpose. Ooh, god dang. End quote. Not the goddamn part, but yeah. yeah. End quote. <laughs> D-A-N-G. Man, you know, that is crazy to think about. Short, sweet, but it's self-explanatory. So true. So true. All right, and it's like, put your energy where your heart desires. Mm -hmm. right? Where it matters, where you think is the right thing. Mm -hmm. And like we said, do the right thing, even though there's repercussions with that such action the universe knows the cards are dealt to, to all of us and we just got to play the hand that we have you know gambit throws many hands but he knows what he has to do and surprisingly enough the actions that he's doing for sabertooth mm -hmm. it just shows that no matter the past you've gone through or your experiences you know the present moment is what it's all about and it's like everyone has a purpose and that that's not just to make money you know to save your life is a purpose yeah Constrictor, it was a it was a short stint, but it was his purpose was to save his friend, his girlfriend, whatever that 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 what that relationship is for him. But he was willing to risk it all, or he was willing to go through it. Running, yeah, running in small here and big or small, you're saving, you're doing something. That's your purpose. Mm -hmm. Going to the grocery was a purpose. Right? Mm -hmm. You got to eat for tonight. You know, it's like no different for a caveman. You know, you got to hunt all day in order to find the food. You mm -hmm. know, it's like yeah, okay, yeah, mod we're in modern day and it's like we're no longer cave people but it's just that whole analogy of having a mission having a purpose of what you got to do for yourself for the people that you surround yourself with you know your next moves might hurt or break you but at least yeah. now you know like the lengths to go and where it leads you yeah. you know for these guys they they didn't expect that repercussions or they didn't expect the outcome of working together but you know they found the truth and then look, the universe rewarded everybody mm -hmm. and, and the whole trust being yeah. expensive, but you know, just trust the universe. Mm -hmm. You know, the universe knows. Believing what you don't see, but knowing there's something you know come out of it. Yeah, for sure. That, you know, that leap of faith, that's good, that something's gonna lift you. Having a good conscience. Good conscience and positivity. Oh. Yeah, you know, don't be afraid to do the right thing. But I think the number one though, you gotta make sure that what you know is what you know and, what, mm -hmm. and it's the right information you know you don't don't go in there assuming mm -hmm. and then you just try to fake it to be the hero mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's like people know that and if you're trying to do it for your reels for the likes and the views you know you're gonna be like cranky you know the, the, you're gonna end up like him and just the fast life is not gonna last yeah the fast won't last <laughs> <laughs> So y'all, you really know, like E40, everybody has choices, yep. but now what's next? Yeah. And uh, that's up to you. Yep. And we're not going to act like we know you guys, but let this story, this one and done story be an example of where you are and the self-reflection of where you need to go and who you need to be and what you need to be and your purpose, yeah. right? And, yeah. um, and just relook at your desires. You know, are you doing it for the money or are you doing it for yourself and what you need to put out into the world? You know, whatever action is conscious. Yeah, I mean, your higher like, conscious. Yeah, yeah, it's your higher conscious tapping into, making you do those things. It's the universe telling you. It's like, that's why they say, like, oh, everyone's caught. 
Yeah. yeah. I'd like to be God. Right. Creating. Yeah, art. Doing right. things, yeah. You know, Steve Scorosi was God. You know, yeah. He created this whole, that whole sequential art. You know what I mean? Yeah. He created stories. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah. it just shows that we all be, we all got blessed with that stardust of creativity. Mm -hmm. And it's all in us. You just gotta tap into it. And just mm -hmm. really know who you really are. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what it comes down to. And why, why you do what you do. Right. We all have God's DNA. Right. Just remember your why. And yep. The universe is one of them, but now the rest is up to you. So just remember your why. Know your why. For sure. So, so it's that time for us to say, keep creating, stay creative. Stay independent, have your own voice. Do your best to be the human being and do the right thing, but stay motivated and keep going. Yeah, spread the positivity, kill the negativity, and uh, live life to the fullest. Yeah, y'all, we, we only get one chance at this, so make it worth it. Yeah, never know. Yeah. So till next time, y'all. Till next time. Peace. Peace. I love you. Me too. <laughs> what are you willing to sacrifice? Ooh. And is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Only you know it.